Today's guest is a clip from our interview with Chuck Inequiche. He is an American-born shot putter who is has dual citizenship. Parents are from Nigeria, and he opted to compete for Nigeria. He's had an amazing international career. So in today's clip, we will talk about a few things ranging from his early hammer experience, his transition from the glide to the rotational shot, and making that switch to an elite world-class shot putter. your PR in high school? A uh, 62.4. Okay. So you, and you were about 5'10 and 220. Are you, have you gotten much taller since then? I have not gotten much taller. I'm about, <laughs> right now I'm about 5'11. Okay. Um, so 5'10, what do you currently weigh? 280. 280. Okay. So in high school, you were 5'10 and about what, 220? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So that definitely helps. Now I noticed that your pictures look fantastic you look super jacked when we see you and when you're throwing um so you're about 5 11 and 280 um so in high school you go 62 you get recruited you go to purdue and yep. had obviously had a, a a modest first year right i think you were right about 16 meters or so yeah 16 26 in the shot okay and uh you know the, that first year to the 16 is I, I've talked to a couple of other coaches and some guys I know, and they said, you know, I, I don't know anybody, no matter how good they are, that first year is always the toughest year, you know? And um, so from there, you kind of, the next year, it looked like you jumped up right around what high 18 meters. And in, yeah, indoors 18. And then outdoors, I had one meet at 1905. So the next few years, obviously you kind of do with a lot of throwers, you get to 19, that's a big jump. And mm -hmm. you were working with Coach McBride at the time. Yep. Right. And so, and, and from what I did looking at the research on you, it looks like so he arrived when you arrived, right? So he he wasn't the coach who necessarily recruited you. Right. But you show up and then he shows up. And obviously, talk a little about how that process was for you uh, you know new coach first of all that happens a lot in the NCAA people get recruited and mm -hmm. then maybe a coach you know he goes to it and takes another job so talk yeah. about how that kind of worked for you two and then obviously you had a lot of success together mm -hmm. yeah so um McBride and I like you said showed up at the same time um the coach that recruited me wound up having to leave and um after I got on campus I kind of I finally got to know that and um the track and field supervisor asked me to come into the office and meet my new throws coach which you know again I'm 18 years old I'm like I already met him like he took me on a visit and everything so um I come in and meet McBride and he kind of again like we said we're, I'm, I was 5'10 220 at the time and he's like kind of <laughs> looking me up and down and not too sure about what's going on so you know he told me his goals for me, which were to throw um, over 58 feet as a senior in the shot put and um, 70 feet in the weight and then over 65 in the hammer. And um, the thing about that was I wanted to quit the shot put because when I threw 62 four in high school, I was gliding. Uh -huh. So I'd have to learn the spin. And um, the plan actually leaving high school was to kind of become a hammer thrower. And we figured that the weight would be too heavy for me at that point. So I throw the weight indoors, you know, turn, turn, let it go to get ready for outdoors once I'm in college. But Coach McBride had the idea that if I'm throwing it, I got to throw it for real. So okay. if I'm throwing I got to throw the shot put for real. If I'm throwing the weight, I got to throw it for real. And I'm throwing the hammer, same thing. I got to throw it for real. So that shifted my focus a little bit. Then um, basically on Purdue's campus is where I started learning the spin. And that was the same time I started throwing a 16 pound ball. So things didn't go very well that first year, but I mean, we, we grinded that whole year and the plan was to be ready in 10 months after red shirting. And that's what happened. Yeah. So that first year, obviously it looks like you go 59 meters, roughly 59, 60, I think with the hammer as a, and that's a, that's a pretty legit mark for a, for a freshman. 
um, now it's it's changed. It's amazing how much it's changed, even like the hammer and the shot, right? From the time you were in, you know, 62 feet is a great high school throw, but 62 feet in 2012 was a much better high school throw, you know? And nowadays it's just like the level of shot globally and especially in the US, right? It's just, it's insane. So going kind of talking about some of that, obviously um, your hammer progressions were pretty uh, in, impressive as well. And a lot of people may not know that obviously you've had, um, you know, a ton of success as a shot putter, uh, finalist at the Worlds in Doha. Again, um, you know, I mentioned this to Zane Weir. When you get eighth place, you didn't just get eighth place at the World Championships. It was like the best eight World Championships ever, right. right? Like the marks, the marks across the board, crazy deep, like, you know, the, the same thing. It, it's just been absolutely insane. So then um, you were fourth at the World Cup in 2018. And that's the Ostrava meet, which is always looks like a really cool meet. Yeah, it was, it was a fun one. Yeah, and I and I think that it's really cool. I'm gonna just I'm living vicariously through through you and all these other guys because I love the places you get to go. Right, it's really cool. Um, so all African Games champion, uh, Commonwealth. You got to go down to the Gold Coast in Australia and second there behind Tom Walsh. Obviously, kind of just taking a, a couple steps back. You grow up in the U.S. Your parents are from Nigeria. Yep. When did you kind of decide that? You know, because I think uh, a, a lot of throwers are well, not a lot of throwers, but there's a number of throwers that kind of get in this situation. Do I do I represent the U.S. or do I represent Nigeria um, or whatever country? When did you start to one think about representing Nigeria? And then two, you know, what was the process like to actually make that decision and, and do it? Yeah, so um, I thought I'd be able to go on to the professional level around my junior year in college, or maybe a little bit before that. And um, Coach Green, the head coach, was um, one of the Bahamian national coaches, and he had professionals. He worked with Veronica Campbell Brown and, mm -hmm. you know, he, he uh, Regina George. So he'd seen collegians make that leap and to him it was a no-brainer we had um chris huffins on the staff also as the jumps coach and the multis coach mm. he was a big bronze medalist right. in 96 so he kind of saw something in me and then coach mcbride himself who was with me through training daily was like you know get your mind around <laughs> moving on from college to the professional level so those talks were happening from like sophomore to junior year mm. and um I think the conversation was, like you said, do you represent the US or my parents, you know, home country of Nigeria? And we looked at America and at the time there were like five 21 meter guys, which we figured that's what it would take. And um, the hammer also, I was at 72 meters, but I would need a three meter jump. So we shifted the focus more to shot put later on. And um, we saw that America would not need me quite as much as Nigeria would appreciate to have me. Um, so it wasn't really a hard choice. And I was born a Nigerian citizen, so I didn't do a bunch of like paperwork mm. and meet okay. interviews and stuff. It was just like, all right, cool. I have two passports. Let me use this one. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it was pretty, it was, it was definitely uh, a little easier transition. So <laughs> now, you know, I'm going to take it one step back. You mentioned too, with it, when my bride met you, he kind of looked you up and down. You're this 5'10", 220 guy. Um, I'm sure you were pretty low body fat and Jack 220 though, right? As, yeah. Especially if you're throwing 62 in the glide, that's, a, that's an impressive glide. When he says to you, you know, the goal is to get you to throw 58 feet by the time you're a senior, one, what's immediately in your head and you're thinking good or are you thinking, man, I'm going to throw a hell of a lot farther than 58 feet? No, um, I wanted to be done with the shot put. Oh, I, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, it's not I didn't like the event. It's so my coach in high school was um, Jean Joseph Roman, and he was a Frenchman, but he was raised in the Ukraine. And um, he only knew the linear technique. All he did was glide. And okay. the way I glided was pretty much European. It was, you know, short, long, wide base, stuff like that. That's not really applicable to the rotation. So I, my mind was pretty much crystallized on like, that's how I could get the ball the farthest. And the 16 
would not, you know, I, I couldn't do anything with the 16. Right. That was my 18 year old brain, you know, thinking that, especially after throwing 19, you know, in high school. So I was ready to be done with it. And Coach McBride is like, hey, I want you to throw over 58 feet. So he's probably thinking 60, but didn't want to scare me. Right. You know, I'm like, how the hell? I can't throw this thing 50 feet. So um, it it shocked me. And I, I kind of left that meeting um, a little bit spooked because then I had to, you know, I'm here now. It's a real thing. My recruiting process was really short. So, you know, basically everything was thrown at me super fast, including some of those big boy goals. So left me a little bit spooked, but um, I think it was up to me to figure out, you know, how to get my mind around it. And, you know, Monday was practice. So. So that's cool. Now that said, so hammer was really kind of your, your real love then. Yeah. And that, that's another thing. So the reason I picked up the weight was so I can throw the hammer in high school. Okay. So, Coach looked at me and was like, my high school coach looked at me and was like, look, you're you're a small guy, but you have a lot of like good attributes. So you'd probably be a hammer guy eventually. But if you look at my high school um, rundown, I threw it for one season. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay.